Hey guys, Marky Sharky here. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to find the exotic export vehicles that were recently added in the Los Santos Tuners update. I've learned a lot trying to do this myself, and I'm going to pass on to you everything that I've learned so far. All I ask in return is that you leave a like down below so that other people are able to find this guide. If I do find out any more info, or maybe if you have anything which you think will help everyone else, then just leave it in the comments and I'll try and pin any useful information. To unlock the exotic export pass of the new update, you first have to buy an auto shop. Then head over to it and complete the initial setup mission, which shouldn't take too long at all. Once you're back at your auto shop, you can head upstairs and you'll see the exotic export blackboard with 10 vehicles written on it. These are the 10 vehicles that you can find and export for a reward. This list changes every day and as far as I know, everyone will have the same list at the same time. Every car that you export will earn you $20,000 and 1000 RP. And if you complete all 10 in one day, you will get a $100,000 bonus and the platinum award. So, if you get all 10 vehicles, you will have made a total of $300,000 in that entire day. However, getting all 10 of these vehicles in one day is a very challenging task and I'm going to do my best to help you achieve that. Of these 10 vehicles, some of them are cars that you can find just driving around in free mode. As far as I'm aware, it seems like two of the 10 vehicles will be like this, where you can find them in free mode every day. In this list, for example, I had the Pegasi Infernus and the Fista Comet as the two vehicles that you can find just driving around. I would personally go for these two vehicles first, as in my opinion, they're a bit easier to get and you can still get the other vehicles whilst trying to find these. Now, I'm not sure if it's just me, but it feels like the spawn rate of these vehicles gets significantly reduced as soon as they come on the exotic exports list. You can find out where these vehicles spawn by googling the vehicle and looking on the GTA wiki, or maybe if you're asking the Discord, I'm sure someone will help you. Something that normally helps street vehicles spawning in is driving that particular vehicle. Normally, if I drive a bullet, for example, then a lot more bullets will spawn in. However, this does not seem to be the case with the exotic exports. I tried driving around in the Infernus for the exotic exports, and I ended up finding the Comet before I found the Infernus. Although I have to say, the Infernus is generally quite rare anyway, and if the spawn rate is reduced in exotic exports, then that explains why it was quite difficult. So I'm not entirely sure if driving the same vehicle does help, but if you already own that vehicle, then you might as well try it. Okay, let's talk about the other 8 exotic export vehicles, which you can't find any old NPC driving around in. These cars spawn in as random spawns, which you can identify by the blue dots on the minimap. You may have seen my guide on Solomon's movie props, or maybe my guide on how to find Patrick McCreary, or even the drunk guards for Kaya Perico. These are all examples of random spawns, which can be an absolute pain in the butt to get to spawn in, and the exotic exports cars are very similar. In fact, all 10 exotic export cars can spawn in like this. Even the two cars that can be found as street vehicles can also be found as slightly more modified random spawns with the blue dots. There is a total of 100 possible spawns around the map where you can get these exotic export vehicles to spawn in. I'll leave a link to this website down below where you can see all of these spawn locations. Personally, I like looking in this area because it seems to have the highest density of spawn locations. There's a number of methods that you can try in order to get these cars to spawn in. The one that Rockstar probably wants you to do is just play the game normally and if you see a blue dot then go for it and deliver it. But unless you're extremely lucky and playing GTA for pretty much the whole day, you probably won't find all 10 cars in one day just by doing this. So I'll give you a couple of methods to try and spawn them in manually. I'll start with the most common way that people try to get them to spawn in. Go to the area where you want to try to get the cars to spawn in and literally just drive around. I like to take this route as it goes past a lot of possible spawn locations in a relatively short distance. Then eventually you'll see a blue dot appear on your minimap and you can head over to the car, steal it and deliver it to the docks and get your reward. Some people prefer flying low to the ground using something like an oppressor mark 2 instead of driving. This method has also worked for me, so I'm not sure whether driving or low flying is better to be honest, maybe it's just personal preference. With both driving and flying, I have a feeling that going a bit slower can help with the spawns. It seems that almost all the time when a car spawns in for me, I was going very slowly or barely moving at all. So, once again, you can experiment and play around with this, but I think going slower might be more beneficial. The next method is one that I don't see as many people talking about, but it seems to work for me quite well, and that is switching sessions. Go to a spot where you want to try to get a car to spawn in. If nothing spawns in, then set your spawn location to last location and switch sessions. When you spawn into the next session, just stay where you are for a minute or two. 
If nothing spawns in, then switch again. And eventually, you should spawn in, and then next to you, you'll see a blue dot and a car will spawn in. I actually really like this method because it's somewhat AFK, so you can go and do something else which you need to, like doing some chores, or in my case, editing some Los Santos Tuners videos, and just switch sessions every now and again, and eventually you'll find it. Some people say that if you start a VIP or CEO mission, and then let that mission expire, then you have a high chance to get a vehicle to spawn in. Personally, I haven't had any luck with this method, but if nothing else works for you, then you could give this method a try. There is one other method that you could try. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this method, but since this is a complete guide, I will mention it. When another player steals an exotic export, you will be alerted on your minimap that they have. And since everyone has the same exotic exports list, you could steal their car and deliver it yourself. However, this is morally questionable because your gain relies on someone else's loss. And to be honest, I've only ever seen one other player with a car that I can steal. So it's probably a waste of time to just wait for this to happen. Before we end the video, I've got a couple more tips and tricks which may help you with these cars. When you go to steal the car, you won't get a wanted level, which is really nice as you don't have to worry about cops. You do, however, have to be careful of other players who may want to steal your car from you, so I would try to take a route that minimizes encounters with other players. You also don't have to worry about crashing the car. Regardless of the condition, you will be paid the same amount. And as far as I'm aware, there's no time limit from when you spawn in the car to when you deliver it, so you have time to be careful. Just remember that the longer it takes you, then the more time you're leaving for other players to potentially kill you. Another thing is that I've personally had the most luck getting the cars to spawn in when I'm in a public session. This could just be a coincidence because every time I switch sessions it puts me in a public lobby, but it's still something you might want to be aware of. Also, I seem to have the best luck when I'm not in a CEO organisation, but I've seen other people find these cars even whilst in a CEO organisation, so I don't think this matters too much. So, let's wrap up. Are these missions worth it? In my opinion, no, they're not. It can be fun, but it sucks as a money making method if you're doing it actively. I would say if they naturally spawn, then maybe go for it, but I wouldn't waste your time trying to get it to spawn in unless you really want the award for getting all 10 in a day. If you're looking to make money, then I would highly recommend you to check out some of my other videos. I have loads of guides on how to make money in GTA, such as guides on how to make nearly 2 million every hour with the Kaya Perico heist, and that's not using any glitches. I'll leave a link to them in the description below. Anyway, if this guide did help you, then I would really appreciate a like on the video. It really helps other people find this video, so if you think more people deserve to see this video, then a like would go a long way. And of course, subscribe to this channel for more Los Santos Tunas guides. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.